This is India, where the cow is sacred, but many of its people are untouchable. A country with a system of social division, otherwise known as the caste system. It is a system that denies the very dignity of human beings because the untouchables are categorized as polluting people and therefore their touch, their approach, even their seeing is considered polluting. It's the most cruel, inhuman, degrading system that the society has ever witnessed and experiences. Now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light we sing your praise I was no wrong we sing your we see we sing. I can't do this gracious love oh that goes on for a long time your brightness of the ever living father in My relationship with God is expressed through my music as a composer. St. Augustine said, he who sings prays twice, and I believe it. I still believe it. My name's Randall Giles. I'm the director of the Department of Liturgy and Music for the Church of South India's Madras Diocese. I'm working to improve the practice of music in the churches, in particular the place of music in the liturgy, and I'm carrying out field work in all kinds of Indian music in an ambitious bid to foster a local musical tradition that can help to spread the gospel. I'm living in Chennai, formerly called Madras. It's a busy, hot, and humid coastal city of seven million people in the southeast corner of India. Christianity first arrived here, tradition has it, with St. Thomas the Apostle in around the year 52 AD. We're standing right now on Thomas Mount. He was martyred here in the year AD 72. The Portuguese came here in the late 15th century and were very surprised to find Christian communities all up and down the west coast. This church was built in 1523 on the traditional site of St. Thomas's martyrdom. Archaeologists think that the cross above the altar in this chapel is from the 5th or 6th century and represents a stream of water flowing from the cross with the Holy Spirit hovering over it. It was the work of the Holy Spirit which brought the Dalits, the untouchables, in large numbers and today the Dalits or the untouchables constitute from two-thirds to three-fourths of the Indian church. The church is divided up into many different groups caste groups, class groups, each of which has a very particular self-understanding of what it is to be Christian, what it is to do music in church. Music can be inviting of people to become a part of the Christian community. The worship here is clearly devout but it exists in a sort of time warp, England in the early 20th century, and does not represent Christianity's vitality in the early 21st century, nor any of the cultural wealth of Indian society. <laughs> 
Any outsider coming to a Christian church may find the atmosphere a little thick, a little uninviting. It's really that bad. And in some churches, then, they do an interlude between every verse of the hymn that is the entire verse and as slowly. So hymns can take as much as 15 minutes to sing. One of them. Anyway, but that's only in churches that believe themselves to be very Anglican. Where growth is happening is among the untouchables, whose churches are getting more members all the time. We are at All Saints Church, Triplicane, in Madras. In terms of the Church of South India, this church would be called, I think, in the Episcopal Church, Broad Church. The music is varied and somewhat, in this case, influenced by cinema music. And uh, some make cassettes and they are distributed widely throughout the uh, diocese. The church is not expanding as much as it could, partly because of caste problems. I don't think that blood is thicker than the waters of baptism. A strong symbol of that belief is found in music. And there could be a kind of music, I think, uh, one day that transcends these boundaries, that is wholly Indian, that is not Hindu, that is Christian, and that is not bound by caste. Finding that music is a long job, which we're only beginning to think about it, and that's not very many people yet. I mean, these are very new ideas. We've come to Nandanam, two hours' drive from Madras, to visit with a rural community of untouchables as part of my work in experiencing folk traditions here. Certain Christian rituals also use a lamp like this to uh, symbolize light, but the light of Christ. This rather compelling music is devoted to the worship of the goddess Matama. From my experience, the best music, the music that interests me most here, does come from the Hindu tradition. It's very special folk style I like very much. Thank you. Oh, thank you. This very... Oh, oh, like this. Two strings, two strings, not one, two. <laughs> Oh, 
now it's out of tune. Now it's out of tune. <laughs> Too high. <laughs> this music, which is a general kind of folk style, which is used for both secular and religious purposes, so it's not strictly religious in terms of its musical style, has elements of storytelling and of sharing of history in this call and response form uh, that I think can be very important in reimagining what Indian Christian music might be. Not this particular music, but music in this spirit. And I think that it's very valuable. It is a reminder of the manipulative power of music that the sung devotions can be so beautiful in spite of the social despair they perpetuate. There is a more sinister side to the worship of the goddess Martama. These are the children of Martama. The woman you see here speaking in her native Telugu is known as a Martama. She is a prostitute, handed over to the temple at an early age by her parents. She will serve the goddess as a prostitute for the rest of her life. They want to come out from the, this structure and want to live as an ordinary woman in the society. And particularly, they want to marry a man, legal marriage, very particularly she wants to have the legal marriage, and to get the babies, and to live like ordinary people. So that they are eager, that's why they are came here, they're asking to live uh, just like ordinary men and women. Yeah. <laughs> Brahminism, which is the appropriate name for Hinduism, is nothing but caste system. Minus caste system, Hinduism is dead. When caste system disappears from India, Hinduism will also disappear. This is a song, a Telugu tribal song, about birth. The songs we learn as children stay with us all our lives. Sung like that? Welcome, 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 Lord Jesus. You know, I have something to tell you. Sometimes you do not sing the same notes he's singing, especially when it goes yada da, da da da. No, must be yada ba. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Oh, bye bye.
நீ சோத்துக்கப்பா என் கண்ணே நீ அழுற அப்பா ஆராரோ ஆரரிரா அப்பா நீ ஆரோ என் கண்ணே நானாரோ அப்பா நீ அழாத அழாதோட